Hello everyone, I am Akash and I welcome you all to this channel. So friends, in this video, we are going to have a look at these front-end interview questions that were asked to me recently. So stay tuned and do watch this video till the end. Now let's have a look at the first question. So friends, this first question is based on hoisting. So the interview gave us this particular, like we can say, code and he asked us to guess the output. So friends, hoisting means to move the declaration to the top, not initialization. That's why the output that we got is undefined because in this particular case, what will happen is we are doing console log a before initialization of that particular variable. So what will happen? The declaration will move to the top, but not the initialization part. So we will get undefined as a result. And one more thing, friends, this hoisting only works with where and not with const or let. So friends, based on the same concept, the interview gave me another coding snippet. So we have to guess its output. So its output is hello. Why? Because hoisting works with function declaration as well. Okay. So we have like before even declaring the function, we have called it and it is giving us the result because hoisting works with function declaration, but not with function expression. So let's have a look at another output based question. So as we can see that here we have function expression and when we try to call it before its declaration, we get, we got reference error. So friends, now let's move ahead with the next question. So friends, now let's suppose that we are given two async operations or we can say that two promises. And what is asked is that there is a third operation that depends on the result of these two. Or we can say that after these two functions, these two async operations are fulfilled, then only that third function should trigger. So how are we going to achieve this? So friends, the answer that I gave to the interview was promise.org. So the interview asked me like a little bit about it, like how it is resolved, how it is rejected, what it returns. And after this, he asked me to write a polyfill on promise.org. So this is the code that we can write. But before writing a polyfill about any function, we should know it's working. I have already covered promise.all in a separate video. I have a separate playlist for all the promise, basically for all the polyfills that were asked to me in the frontend interview. You can also check those videos out. The link is in the description box. So let's have a look at this piece of code. So promise.all, it takes a promise array and it is fulfilled, which means that it gets resolved only when all the promises are resolved. And if any of those promise gets rejected, then our promise.all also gets rejected. Okay. And the order of result is also maintained in promise.all. So let's have a look over here. Uh, we have promise.myall as a function, which is taking promise array as argument. And I have two variables. One is to track the number of promises getting resolved counter. Second is to store the result that is an empty array. As I've told you that promise.all, it returns a promise. That's why we are returning a promise. And inside it, we are running a loop over the promise array. Now let's have a look at this piece of code. So now inside that loop, what we are doing is if that particular promise is resolved, then we are going to go inside the then block. We are simply incrementing the counter plus plus and we are storing that result at that particular index because we have to maintain the order as well. And we do not know which promise will get resolved when. Okay. And then we are checking if counter becomes equal equals to promise array length, then we are simply resolving it or else if anything gets into the catch block, we are simply rejecting it. So this is the code that I have given to the interview. So friends, now let's have a look at the next question. So now we were given to compute the following and this question is based on curring. So I have. So what we have to do is we have simply friends don't skip this video over here. We have a more important variation of the same. So what we have done over here is we have made a function add that is taking a comma B. Then we are simply returning another function that is taking C comma D and we are finally returning a plus B plus C plus D. Okay. So you can also say that, yeah, we have made a closure over here. Okay. Now let's see that important variation that I want to show you. Okay. So friends, this is that important variation. Okay. So we can say that uh, it is a infinite curring example. Okay. And you must have seen it another variation in which it takes like only one argument. 
but in this the interviewer gave us two arguments for each uh, you know inside each parenthesis so we have like add 1 comma 2 3 comma 4 up till m comma n okay and we have to compute its result so i would say you should think you should pause the video and start thinking so now let's have a look at the solution so the approach that i gave to the interviewer was similar to something that i just showed to you okay we have a function at that is taking a comma b it is returning another function c comma d but if you are now going to return another function then another function then that will make our code messy so over here what we can see is we can simply type like if we have c comma d again then what we are going to do is basically we are going to simply call it recursively okay? and we are going to pass a plus b plus c plus d as a and comma zero else what we are going to do is we are simply going to return a plus b okay and friends if you want a more detailed explanation then do let me know in the comment section i will make a separate video on it and i would like to say that uh, what you can do is you can simply like copy paste this code and try adding console after if condition and after else condition and console the value of a comma b comma c comma d so you will get a better you know understanding and uh, what we can do is we can also like let's have a dry run once uh, let's suppose the value of um, a comma b is 1 comma 2 then what is going to have is we have c comma d as well so it is going to recursively call it for 10 comma 0 okay then again we are going to see is uh, now the value of a comma b is 10 comma 0 and c comma d is 4 comma 5 okay so it is going to now again see we have c c and d and it is going to add 10 plus 9 19 now it is going to go recursive again and the value of a will be 19 comma 0 and the value of c and d will be 2 so it is again going to call it recursively and we are going to get the 21 as result okay now it is going to come down and it is going to check now this time we do not have c comma d it we are simply calling a function okay so it is going to go in else block and it is going to return us 21 plus 0 which is 21 so i hope the dry run is also clear to you all okay so now let's move ahead so friends in this the interview gave us to mimic the same using promise so what we are given over here is we are simply given a function okay that is taking a callback and that callback is getting triggered with some values after a interval of one second so let's see how we can do the same using promise so this is the solution what we have done over here is we have also created a similar function and we are simply returning a promise and that promise gets resolved after a set timeout of 1000 milliseconds or one second so friends now let's have a look at another question so the next we were asked to write a pseudo code for memoize function so friends let's suppose this multiply by 2 is a costly function and how we are going to write a solution for this so this is the solution in which what we have done is we have simply created a memoize function we have created one cache let's say it is an object and then we are returning another function which is taking the basically input and the main code lies in between what we are doing is we are checking inside our cache that if the result corresponding to this particular num is there then simply return that particular value from the cache that is corresponding to that particular key else what we are doing is we are recomputing it storing at that particular uh, key inside the cache and then returning it okay so i hope this code is also clear to you all and how we are going to call it so like this we can call our memoize function now let's proceed ahead so at last the interviewer asked me about the css layout position property so so the number one that i told him static that is the default property number two is relative i told him like with the help of relative we can have access to the properties like top bottom left right then i came to the absolute that absolute means the element will be removed from the default you know flow of the elements that we have okay uh, and then i told about that we can give like top bottom left right we can get the z index then i told him about fix and then sticky so you can give some examples also like i made a fixed header okay for sticky you can say that it uh, by default it is relative and after a certain threshold is crossed it it behaves as fixed 
so you can support your answer like this and friends this is it i hope you have uh, liked this video and you got to learn something new and if yes then don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching